one of the things that Americans surely haven't allowed themselves to forget is the indispensable role the UN played during the Cold War. It was a vital factor in ensuring the Cold War didn't turn hot. Why? Because it provided a roof under which the two superpower adversaries could meet and engage instead of coming to blows. There was actually a place where they could talk and work together. And through the amazing invention of peacekeeping, a concept not even found in the Charter, you had a mechanism to prevent local and regional conflicts from around the world from igniting a superpower clash in a third world war. So the UN did all of that. Now we've gone past the Cold War phase. We have an opportunity to make much more of a difference. And this globalizing world is full of so many of what we like to call these problems without passports, problems that cross all frontiers uninvited. Everything from terrorism, climate change, human rights, uh, drug trafficking. I mean, you can pick your issue. Problems that no one country or even one group of countries, no one coalition, can be rich enough or strong enough or powerful enough to solve on their own. These are by definition problems you need the whole world to come around on. And therefore, it's unthinkable that it wouldn't be of use to the US to have a United Nations to deal with all these problems. And day in and day out, the UN does. It's often struck me that you know, when we had all this focus on the disputes in the UN about Iraq back in 2003, those eight to 10 weeks leading up to the war, when the UN seemed so bitterly divided, no one noticed that in that same eight to 10 weeks, the same 15 ambassadors of the same Security Council met and agreed on a dozen different issues unanimously on Liberia, on Congo, on Afghanistan, on Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, and so on, things that were life and death issues for people in those countries. Mm -hmm.